On March 4th, Major General Andrei Sukhovetsky, Deputy Commander of the 41st Combined Arms Army, was killed as he was going forward with his troops to ensure the security and capture of the Hostomel Airport northwest of Kiev. The death of General Sukhovetsky is the first time in recent history that such a high-ranking flag officer was killed in action. This death has been attributed to a Ukrainian sniper, which may very well be the case, given the fact that the Ukrainians have been fighting a delaying action, not just attacking the convoys leading to the airport and on the main avenues of approach, but also the contingency forces being brought up to secure that area so they can land their transport aircraft and reinforce their supplies and their troop contingents to finally push in from the north and take Kiev. Hello again, I'm Colin Heaton, a former U.S. Army soldier and Marine, and a former professor of history and a military historian and book author. This time on Forgotten History, we will be discussing the death of Major General Andrei Sukhovetsky and his support of his unit trying to capture the Hostomel Airport, northwest of Kiev. At the time of his death, he was deputy commander of the 41st Combined Arms Army. Prior to that, he had been in command of the Nova Russis 7th Guards Airborne Assault Division that had been very active in operating in the Ukraine, uh, on the, in the Crimea, as well as in the Caucasus, Syria, and other places where Putin sent his forces to impose his will. On February 24th, Russian forces actually entered and partially captured the Hostomel airport. The Ukrainians, a few hours later, counterattacked and took that back. The following day on the 25th, the Russian forces again tried to take the Hostomel airport. Again, the Ukrainians fought them back. On the 26th and 27th, Russian forces pushed more soldiers forward and managed to push the Ukrainians out, which time the Ukrainians began dropping their artillery onto the airport, damaging the runway. This airport was critical in Vladimir Putin's strategic plan because he had to have it in order to land his transport aircraft with his supplies and additional troops to reinforce his northern attack. The death of the general sent a shockwave through the Russian forces, and it also showed Vladimir Putin that he basically underestimated the Ukrainian resistance, not just the military, but the civilian component as well. It would appear that the Ukrainian forces had allowed the Russians to enter a kill zone, an open area just east of the airport, and then they began laying fire. The Russians counterattacked in force, taking heavy casualties. The Russians admit to 498 casualties. The Ukrainians claim 9,000 Russians were killed. By the 27th, after the third assault, the Russians did manage to take the airport, but the Ukrainians had damaged it with their own artillery fire, again increasing Russian casualties. From the reports that we're getting, the stiffening Ukrainian resistance, both military and paramilitary, stalled the Russian column from trying to enter the airport to secure it and to allow Russian aircraft to fly in. At this point, it appears that Major General Sukhovetsky decided to move forward and take direct command and control of the operation, at which time, the reports state that a Ukrainian sniper spotted him, located him, and then killed him on the outskirts of Hostomel. We do not know the exact location where he was killed, but we do know that his death sent a shockwave through the Russian forces, and Vladimir Putin lost one of his most able commanders and confidants. The result of this entire operation saw the Russians lose a lot of soldiers, probably more in line with the Ukrainian numbers, but they did secure the airport. Uh, it looks as if they're trying to do repairs to get aircraft in. They did lose several helicopters and a couple of fixed-wing aircraft with the air support they tried to provide. Uh, the Ghost of Kiev is credited with a couple of those uh, from the reports that we have. Again, an ongoing process of verification. The Russians now have a ring around Kiev and they're pushing towards city center, it, it would appear. If the Russians do manage to secure uh, and repair the airstrip at Hostomol, which is a very large airstrip, then they will be able to reinforce that 
in record time and possibly manage to secure Kiev city center within the next week or two. The capture of the airport and the flood of Russian soldiers coming in, despite the best efforts of the Ukrainians to hit the convoys, trucks, tanks, and other materiel, has created a refugee flood not seen since World War II. Uh, that issue alone is a humanitarian crisis. Uh, Vladimir Putin has offered corridors of egress to allow these civilians to escape, but as we're finding out that those were mined and his own artillery and mortar fire is now targeting those civilians trying to flee. We will try and give you updated coverage on this as we receive information, trying to separate the social media fact and fiction and give you the accurate results of these operations. If you like this, please click like and please subscribe and leave your comments. We look forward to getting any commentary or any information from people, especially in country, who can supply us with more information. Again, I'm Colin Heaton with Forgotten History Special Report. Thank you.